Leco dream continues. Another day, another question. All right, so I have a little secret slash surprise for this video. We're not going to learn anything new today. We are just going to do something we already know how to do. So I've covered a lot of backtracking videos and kind of the, the thing that I want from this channel is for you to internalize the patterns between these questions. Many questions will have tiny little like heuristics slash like tricks you can use to solve them. But whenever we're tackling these software engineering questions, there's I think 15 key like large buckets that these questions fit into, which I like delineate in my how to get a job at Google video, although I've never worked at Google, but these are just the patterns of these questions. Today, we're going to do a backtracking question that fits right into the pattern of string decomposition, and it's going to be approached exactly how we tackle other problems like n queens, decomposition of an IP address, and many other backtracking problems that I've done. We're not going to learn anything new today, we're just going to apply what we already know, and let's see how we apply that right now. Now. Today's question is generate all palindromic decompositions of a string. This sounds very intimidating, but it is not intimidating. We're going to get an output as a string, and we're going to decompose that string, break it up, chop it into pieces. Each of those pieces are going to be a palindrome. This is a palindrome. A single letter is a palindrome. It mirrors on itself because it's just a single letter. It's basically like a base case. Single letter, palindrome, single letters. All decompositions, all these decompositions, compositions, take away the commas, collapse them back together, and they are our original string. So I want you to notice in the problem, given a string, return all decompositions of that string. What do you notice the key terms are in this question? Return all, and anytime it's a problem dealing with decompositions, we're going to be exploring a space of decisions, exploring a space of possibilities of ways we could go cutting the string up. If we explore all those ways and keep our constraints in mind, we will be able to answer this question effectively. Another thing to keep in mind is array and strings. These are kind of interchangeable. A string is just an abstraction of an array of characters. Just keep this in mind so we literally could decompose an array. Doing backtracking, we can decompose a string. The reason I said this is something we already know how to do is because we've already covered questions like this. We've already done backtracking questions like this. So the approach is not going to be any different we're going to advance through the string, try different decompositions, make choices, backtrack on those choices, and collect all possibilities when we reach our goal. So now let's look at the approaches as well as the three keys to backtracking for this problem. For this problem, we have two major choices. We have the brute force choice where we can generate all decompositions and what we do is we have all these decompositions. Some are palindromic, some are not palindromic. We need to validate every single string in that decomposition to check if it's a palindrome and therefore we only add the palindromic decomposition to our answer. This is brute force. What is the problem with this? Why is this a problem? First off, we're going to be doing unnecessary work in generating all of these decompositions. And second off, if we add a non-palindrome to our decomposition, we instantly disqualify the answer. We're going to follow a search tree of decomposition on a decomposition that cannot even be an answer. That is a waste of time and that is not the track that we want to go. So the key is we need to direct our recursion and we need to choose paths that will yield us an answer. We already know this. We know the three keys to recursion that I've covered in other videos. The three keys to our backtracking are going to be, what is our choice? We are going to choose a substring to recurse on. We're going to have a pointer. We're going to take a snippet of the string. So I take a snippet from zero to zero. So then I take a snippet from index zero to one. So then I take a snippet of index zero to two. And this is the top of our recursion. This is our first choice. And then what we do is we're going to recurse into that choice. And what we need to do is we need to make every sure every snippet we recurse on must be a palindrome or else we are generating an invalid decomposition. We are doing unnecessary work. We do not want to follow path on a decomposition, a decomposed piece that is not a palindrome. Every piece must be a palindrome. Our constraints, this is simple. This is a formula. 
our constraint is that every snippet must be a palindrome. We're going to choose a snippet, recurse. Choose a snippet, recurse. And every one of those snippets must be a palindrome. When are we finished? Number three, our goal. What is our goal? Our goal is to decompose the whole string. Our goal is to get our decomposition pointer out of bounds. When it is out of bounds, it equals the length of the string, which is indexed one out of bounds. We're going to know we have decomposed the whole string. We have expressed a potentiality and we can backtrack and express more potential answers. This is the key to backtracking. These are the three keys. So now let's look at the code for this answer and walk through how it does this. And again, we are not learning anything new. We are seeing the patterns. We are seeing how patterns apply to other questions. All right, so a quick thank you to Alex Liu um, at Up the Hell on Leak Code. That is a very interesting name. Um, thank you to him for this code. I just adapted it. The code is below in GitHub. All I did is reformat it. I added a ton of comments so that you can understand this, but I'm going to walk through it here on the whiteboard so you can see a walkthrough as well. Again, we're just going through the same pattern. This is the same format we apply to these backtracking problems. We understand our choice. We understand our constraints. We understand our goal. Up here we have our driver function. Our driver function creates our list for all of the valid decompositions and creates a list for the decomposition we are working on at the moment through our recursion. We hit the play button on our recursion, we go into our recursion, and our goal is going to be we want to advance our pointer, our build pointer, past the array. Once we are at the array's length, once the build pointer is at the array's length, then we know we have a valid decomposition because up to the point of the base case, we were only adding palindromes. What we have in our base case is now a palindromic decomposition. Every one of our choices was within the constraints. When we get to the base case, we have stayed within the constraints and we have an answer. Our goal is what crafts our base case, and we know that our answer is going to be valid when we reach that base case. What we do is we make a decision. We start from our build pointer to the end of the string. We take snippets, snippet, 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 cut pieces, and we validate each of those pieces. Is that piece a palindrome? I don't have the helper here, but you can see it in GitHub. It's a simple palindrome validation function. We see, is the snippet that I took a palindrome? If it is, add it to, add it to our progress and continue. And continue our recursion with our build pointer now pointing at one after the position of the end of our snippet. So now we are going to be able to take our snippet and then move on, express all the possibilities, move on. So this is the key. And what we do is when this search is over, after we have finished exploring all of our options, we are going to return to this stack frame. Each one of these calls is a policy. It is a stack frame that expresses potential. Once that potential is expressed, we return to where we were and we're going to hit this line. When we come to this line, we remove the snippet we just explored on and we choose another snippet. For example, if I have the string A, A, B, I can choose A. And then what I do is my top level stack frame has three choices. It can choose the string of just A or AA or AAB. If I choose just A, then now I can recurse and I can choose from the rest of the string. And then after all that searching is done, I return to this top stack frame. And now my next top level choice can be AA. That is also a palindrome. And then I recurse. And then that exploration finishes. I come back upwards. My next choice is AAB. And what happens is then we go to the bottom. AAB would not even be a path followed because it is not a palindrome. Now this is our code. This is how we do it. This is the same pattern. And when I told you at the start of this video we wouldn't learn anything new today, we have not learned anything new today. We just reapplied what we know. We reapplied our three keys, our choice, constraints, and goal. Choice, constraints, goal. We reapplied how we know to do backtracking to solve this problem within the constraints given. We have not learned anything new. We have reapplied what we know. And this is the key. This is what I want to get at through this channel, through these videos. I want us to see the patterns so that we can be flexible in answering these questions. So now let's look at the time complexities for this solution. Okay, and now let us consider the worst case time and space complexity. Let us bound the time and space of this, of this operation. So what is the worst case? The worst case we can have is n repetitions. And I forgot to do a key thing. 
A key thing is always define what n is. What are the variables in these functions that you're bounding on? n is the length of the string. If we have n repetitions of a single character, every single decomposition of this string is going to be palindromic. Therefore, we are going to be yielded the 2 to the n minus 1 total decompositions. All of them will be answers. We are going to spend that time computing all of them because they are all decompositions that consist of only palindromes. Therefore, the upper bound we can put on our time is 2 to the n, and we spend linear time in each of the calls. We spend linear time in each of the calls, so we do n times 2 to the n. That is how we bound our time. So the way we bound our space is the worst case space complexity is going to be controlled by our call stack. We're using recursion. We're going to make at max n depth on the call stack. And what does that look like? If we take a snippet A, if we take a snippet A and a snippet A from the overall string AAA, we're going to have a depth of 3 on the call stack. What is n? n is 3. That means we are going to use O of n space. As our string increases linearly in length, our space is going to increase in a linear fashion as well. Constants do not matter here. We worry about tail behavior. This is the time and space complexity for this problem, and this is how we are going to bound it. So, if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. I want to do videos like this every day. I have so many topics to cover. I I have no idea whether I'm going to be able to do all of them this year because it's just hundreds of questions. But I want to try my best to establish these patterns. I think I've gotten a solid basis in the backtracking front in terms of problem type, but there's so many other problem types to explore and see these patterns in. My goal is to establish a pattern you can see in all the problem types so you can enter the interview and have all the tools you need to succeed. So this is what this is all about.